Man, today we've got yellow belly walleyes, a first look at the Dunlap disease, and will someone finally please tell Robert that it do go down? We got that and more coming up right now in Target Walleye's top five presented by Seafoam. Let's dive on in. Are you ready to see a one in a million, pff, one in a billion walleye? I came across this Facebook post from Lydia Doerr. I'm sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong. She's a research technician for the Michigan DNR, and they recently netted and released this incredible golden specimen in Northern Green Bay. What an outstanding critter that is. Lydia also said in her Facebook post that that walleye had a genetic mutation that affects the pigment of the lighter colored skin cell, which I guess is a nice way to break it down in layman's terms because I'm sure if you really dove into it, it's got a lot of big words none of us understand. But what we do understand is a fish like that is incredibly rare, would love to see one in person, but it's really cool that the DNR let it go so it can get even more bigger. By the way, my job has literally been to scour every inch of the internet for about a decade now looking for target walleye content and rare catches and out of years of doing that, I've only ever seen a handful of these golden walleyes before or only been sent a couple of them ever out of hundreds of thousands of people who send me emails. I've actually plopped every single one of them into one quick target walleye read if you're a little gold hungry. Check it out. Have you ever seen a walleye with Dunlap disease before? It's when it's belly Dunlaps over its belt. <laughs> Look at this outrageous specimen. It was 30 inches long with a 22 inch girth. Caught April 9th on pool four of the Mississippi River while fishing with Muddy Waters Guide Service. They said that she smoked a half ounce of do it molds blade bait in that plain nickel color and was also released to get even more bigger, or actually to get smaller, because it's gonna go drop those kids off at daycare and deflate a little bit. Can you imagine? Because I can't. Now I've heard from numerous folks that Captain Josh of Muddy Waters Guide Service does a, things a little bit differently on the river down there. While well, most folks are out a little bit deeper, working those channels, catching lots of eater-sized fish, he's up in skinny water, shallow, just pummeling the shorelines, not afraid to lose baits to try to get him in front of some of those big females getting out of the current. Clearly it's been paying off for him. Sometimes you gotta sacrifice a few bites to go for those big ones, but he also said that they have no problem catching incidental little fish while targeting those big mamas too. Keep doing your thing, Josh. Now growing up and living in central Minnesota, our walleye season is always closed until Mother's Day weekend, and I have always, always tried to imagine what it was like, or what it would be like, to be able to target walleyes early, right after the ice goes out, when they're up pre-spawn, super shallow, staging in those flats, or up there feeding. And all the times that I have daydreamed about what it would be like, I've imagined it looks something just like this crazy Instagram reel posted by Dustin Wolf. You have got to check this thing out. Yeah, sight fishing for walleyes. Unfreaking believable. Definitely go hit up his page and watch it with the audio. It's just a 15 second clip, but it literally gives me goosebumps watching his original post. And his buddy Mindak Outdoors also just posted a new YouTube video yesterday, Thursday, from that trip, a longer version so that you can see exactly how their day unfolded. For sure worth checking that out as well. It looks like they were throwing Kalen's Tickle Tail swim baits, caught a whole pile of eater sized fish, but also had some nice quality bites mixed in up to 26 plus inches. By the way, I saw several comments under both of the videos from people saying that they need to get out of there because those walleyes are protecting their nests, they're spawning, which is not true. Walleyes are broadcast spawners. They do not make nests. They do not protect their eggs. But do you know who does? Their muscle-bound European cousin, the Xander. Imagine fishing in a minefield like this. So if walleyes 
don't make nests, then how do you know the spawn is on? Well, they sometimes leave plenty of DNA evidence lying around, like in this throwback picture from Nitty's Hunter's Point Resort on Mille Lacs. And that pic is actually from 2016, so some of those eggs are probably fat, healthy, mid-20 inch fish right now. But also, if that pic had been posted right now, there'd probably be caution tape around those eggs. But don't get me started on Mille Lacs today. It's Friday. I'm in a good mood. <laughs> Move past it! I can't get it! Let's All move right. past it! Let's put it behind us, guys! I've seen some sketchy fishing spots in my day, but this one posted by Old Row Outdoors on Instagram takes the cake. It do go down! No, it don't. It do go down! Oh! Stop. That wraps up this week's top five. A big shout out to Seafoam for keeping us running smooth and making this fun video series possible. If you want more walleye related content like this, sign up for our free Target Walleye emails at targetwalleye.com and I'll see you back in seven.